I'm Corbin. And I'm Haley. Welcome to Sabbath School. Today our verse is Colossians 3.17. And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to, to God the Father through him. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. All right, guys, here's what I want you to do. I'm going to have you guys release your balloon, and I want you to see if you can hit the blue pillow on the chair. Who thinks they can get it? Me. Okay. All right, Brady, go ahead. Oh! Gemma? And Hopi? Did anyone hit the pillow? No! Can any of you guys control where your balloon went? No! So should we get upset no. over things that we can't control? No. 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 We shouldn't. Just like the balloon hitting the pillow, we couldn't control where that balloon went. So that's not something we should really get too upset about, right? Happy Sabbath, my name is Aubrey and this is Abby. And as we approach Thanksgiving week, we had a great idea to make thank you cards for all the people who work in the hospitals to heal patients. Now, what you will need is white paper or construction paper, crowns, or you could use markers or anything to color with. Once you are done with your card, you will drop it off or you can mail it to the church office and they will get it to the hospital. Bye! Happy Sabbath! Good morning, boys and girls. Welcome to Sabbath School. Okay, I'm going to try something. I'm, I'm going to do, you know, I always got to have some object lesson or something. I like to have an object lesson or something when I teach you guys. I'm going to do one this morning. However, I'm going to tell you, don't try this at home without your parents. If you want to try it, get your parents and you can try it. And, and here's what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some water and I'm going to pour it in here. And let's see. I guess I'll just put the whole thing in there. It won't matter. Just like that. Uh, just for fun, I'm going to put the cup down here so it's out of the way. So you guys don't have to worry about seeing that. I'm going to get some of this. Um, which is just rubbing alcohol, isopropyl alcohol, or whatever. I'm going to pour some of that in there too, right? Now, I'm going to tell you, today's lesson is on contentment, right? So, I got a dollar. Because it seems like so much of our lives, we waste chasing after dollars. And contentment is learning to be happy with what you have. And so, in some ways... As we learn this lesson, if we could learn to stop wasting dollars and maybe hang on to them, maybe we could be a little bit more content. Now, I'm making it dark. You might have noticed that because I want to light this dollar on fire. So you got to watch this. It's it's going to, it's it's all wet. It's so much of our lives we've spent, like I said, chasing dollars and yet... What we need to do is find a way to stop our dollars from burning up like that. Let's try it one more time. I'll be honest with you, right? I practiced this a little bit and I tried it. Kept showing my kids over and over again. And um, I actually burned a hole in another dollar. So parents, keep that in mind if you do try this at home with your kids. Um, what we want to do in our lesson is learn contentment. Contentment to not lose the things that we find valuable, to know what's really valuable, to not chase the non-valuable things. You know what I mean? I'm gonna turn some lights back on, and I'll tell you what. Um, pray with me. Dear Heavenly Father, we don't wanna spend our lives chasing non-valuable things, things that go away, things that burn out in our lives. We wanna have true things that won't burn up in our lives, that last, to make a difference for eternity. Help us today as we learn this lesson to know what those things are and to value them. We love you, dear Lord. In thy name, amen. So, <clears throat> all right, I've got your lights back on. You guys got some good videos of seeing it burn. Maybe I should pull my dollar out and dry it. I don't know. 
so that I can spend it later. Um, okay, so what I wanted to talk to you about is, in our house, we're kind of in a flurry right now because we've started the Christmas list. We've actually started them early because I love to go shopping for the the, the cheapest deals, the best deals, the, the Black Friday deals. And Black Friday tends to be all month in November anymore. So I've been shopping for Christmas deals long before Christmas. So let me ask you a question. If you were writing your list and you had to fill in this blank, all I need is blank. What would you put in the blank? What would you put in the blank? That's really what today's lesson is, is how do we fill in the blank? If I look over, I've got my notes down here. We want to compare two people in the Bible. King Solomon, he was picked by God to be the king. He knew how to rule the people, and he had everything. From the time he was young, all the way through, he had everything. Paul, Paul was a person who persecuted Christians, and had, and God picked him to be one of his followers, turned him blind, brought him back, renamed him Paul. Paul was picked by God. He was, he was a missionary to help the church. He didn't hardly ever have anything that he needed. In fact, when he ran out of money, of things that he needed to go on, he would build tents and sell them till he had enough money to get by. King Solomon... His palace took 13 years to build. Now, I don't know, some of you probably have had parents who built their homes. I bet none of them had a house that took 13 years to build. Solomon, it took 13 years to build. He had so many staff that worked in his home that helped to keep up his home. It took 10 oxen, 100 sheep, and 20 cows they had to slaughter, butcher, or cook them up every day to feed his staff. That's a lot of food every single day. Um, his cups and plates, because he wanted the best, he had them made out of gold. Um, th that's what it was. He had, this is what I thought, in his horse stable on his property, he had 12,000 men just to care for his horses because he had so many horses. It took 12,000 men. Paul, Paul moved around from town to town teaching about Jesus. He actually didn't always know where he was going to sleep when he went from one town to the next. There were times that he had to just depend on people to invite him to their house so that he could tell people about Jesus. That was, that was how he chose to do it. He often was even thrown into jail where he spent time in jail because he kept teaching about Jesus even when he wasn't supposed to because he couldn't quit talking about Jesus. And while he was in jail, he often would be singing and writing books and writing letters and spending time just for even sharing God with other prisoners with the guards while he was in jail. King Solomon, one of his biggest frustrations when we read about King Solomon, he was never content. He was never happy with what he had. He always had to be looking for the next thing to come along. Do we ever get like that? Where we're always looking for the next thing to come along? Paul wrote Philippians 4, 11 through 13, and I have it pulled up right here. It says, I am not saying this because I am in need, for I have learned to be content whatever the circumstance. I know what it is to be in great need, and I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or whether I'm living in want. I can do all this through him who gives me strength. Paul's secret to his contentment is the joy and the purpose that he found in sharing Jesus and following Jesus and having Jesus part of his life. 
King Solomon, he was never content. Paul was content even when he was hungry, even when he was living in want and need. So here's, I guess, what I'm saying. Go back to that Christmas list that I was saying. When you say, all I need is blank, what do we really need? I think the hardest lesson to learn is to learn that what I need is to be a child of God. Live my life every day being a child of God. Connecting to Him, focusing on Him, taking a few minutes to pray and talk to Him every day. And if we do that, I think we'll also develop a great contentment where we're not always trying to burn through money, burn through things in our lives that don't matter but we can hold on to what's real and better connect with God. That's your lesson for today, boys and girls. Again, you want to try and light your parents' money on fire. My recommendations, have them help you with it. Um, it'll go so much better. Don't do it on your own. Help them with it. Um, the other thing is tell them not to use really large bills because if something goes wrong, that hurts a lot more. Um, that's what I got for you. Pray with me and I'll let you go today. Dear Heavenly Father, yeah, most of all, we want to be your children. Through this whole Christmas season, through this whole Thanksgiving, Christmas season, through it all, we want every day to go out as your child, to know you better, to follow you, and to represent you to everyone we encounter. Help us to learn how to do that. Teach us your ways. Thank you, dear Lord. We love you. And in thy name, amen. Bye. We'll see you next week. Happy Sabbath.